uh, Lions Talk by Chat Sports. Please welcome to the show the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Micro Mike. Mike, let me let me get him in here real quick. Mike, how you doing? Hey, I'm in here now, so I'm doing really, really good. Thank you for having me on. Excited, excited. Well, uh, no? Mike, we're, we're very happy you're here. Um, I know you've been seeing what's been transpiring uh, around training camp, um, and I'll start with this. The uh, Jake Bates and Michael Badgley battle that, you know, Badgley didn't kick today, but Jake Bates, we all know what he can bring to the table. Uh, I asked Klotz this, and let's go from 1 to 10. What's kind of your confidence level that Jake Bates ultimately steals this job? You know, look, this is a close battle, but I do think ultimately that Jake Bates is going to get the job. But I actually 100% agree with Klotz here saying that you got to do it in a preseason game. How many times have we seen players in any position, you know, do great in training camp? You got to go on the field and prove it. And guess what? We got three preseason games to do it. And I think Jake, Jake Bates is up to the task. So, you know, a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably go now 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10. I feel like that he will get the job. Love it. Wow. Um, hey, Mike, appreciate you joining the show again. Um, I want to ask you this. All the training camp news, everything coming out, do you have um, just a player or, or, or something that you've heard that might con be concerning right away, just the first week here, uh, first couple of days? Is there a player that you're looking at, like, hey, let's keep an eye on him? Uh, what I've been hearing is a little concerning or um, any, anything like that that you kind of feel like going, going forward? You know, we haven't heard a whole lot of negative when it comes to the players for the Detroit Lions right now in training camp, but I guess saying nothing could be a negative, and I haven't heard a whole lot of really of Joshua Pascal. I would like to see, you know, how well is he performing? I know he plays an interior in the end, the outside, but this is his third year, so I'd like to hear a little bit about him. And when it comes to training camp, I'd like to hear more about James Mitchell, the, you know, third-year tight end now, and I haven't heard a whole lot on him either so i think not hearing stuff says a little bit but i do would like to hear the progress and how these players are doing negative though in all honesty not much this training camp has gone great so far you know when you have jameson williams puking that's always a positive thing that had me laughing but he's been great so far so good for lions training camp yeah great having you on mike where, where are you hiding out at right now you know, I'm on a porch. I'm definitely on a porch right now. Yeah, <laughs> getting getting a little bit, well, trying to get a little bit of the weather without having the bugs in my face. So that's a nice little yeah. wrinkle. <laughs> enjoying the nature, enjoying the nature. Well, something that I um, we kind of hit it on yesterday. I posted about it on Twitter earlier, and it's something that I think is going to be very interesting to watch is Emmanuel Mosley because with Brian Branson moving him to safety, and now Mosley's playing a lot more nickel. And you think about it, he's a veteran for one. He's played in big games. He's a man-to-man -man corner, especially in the nickel. That's nice to have, and he can hit. And with a lot of inexperience with Ennis Rakestraw and then Amik Robertson, obviously he's been proven, but he's still got to learn that scheme a little bit. What do you think the chances of Emmanuel Mosley playing early on in the season are? You know, I like Emmanuel Mosley. I remember we re-signed him, and there are a lot of people irritated with that. And I'm like, look, if he's healthy, he's a really solid player. And what we've seen so far in training camp, he's been healthy, and he's playing at the nickel. And look, if he stays healthy, he was good at San Francisco, really good. And you're just adding to the depth of this secondary that's extremely well. Do I think that he could play? I think he could play in, in, in some instances here. He could play on the outside. We already know that, but he's getting time at the nickel position as well. Look, Ennis Rakestraw, he's a developmental player right now, and I would put him Emmanuel Mosley above him. And if there's an injury to Amik Robertson at the nickel corner, you could see a situation where Mosley comes in. Or if there's an injury to the outside, Terry Arnold or Colton Davis, he's my wild card in the secondary, and I'm very happy to see what's taking place so far in training camp with Mosley. Yeah, Mike, one player I'm absolutely high on, and, and I think this training camp you will, you will start to – the, the playing field will be even with Anzalone, or I think close to is, is with Jack Campbell. And, and Anzalone has been playing at a high level. Uh, Lucas is very confident in Anzalone, thinks he'll still be your best linebacker this year, which I, I don't hate at all. Where are you at with Jack Campbell um, this, this training camp? How big of a training camp is it for him? And kind of your confidence level that he can ultimately close the gap between him and, and Anzalone. And, and if those guys both play at a high level, you got a pretty good linebacker core, Mike. Yeah, I'm very confident he's going to take that next step, right? Um, he's shown progress in OTAs in minicamp. He's starting to really understand the scheme and reacting a little bit faster than they usually do, and he's big body, right? He's a big body. So I don't know if he's going to be to the Alex Anzalone point. You know, Alex Anzalone right now is pretty much the leader in that room. He's going to be on the field, but his ceiling is higher. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And I think this year, 
it's more him and Derek Barnes. And then next year, I would say, I think Jack Campbell's pretty much going to take over that room. But uh, yeah, he, he's going to take that next step. No doubt. No, absolutely. No doubt. Um, Mike, I think the, the biggest conversation here at training camp, Jay, uh, Jameis Winston, Jamo going out there and kind of just dominating. And we, we've seen two days now out in the public with, with media there. And both days, um, Jamo has been kind of the conversation, um, whether it's him getting better in the middle of the field, making big catches, um, beating guys off the line, like just everything he's dominating. What are your expectations for him? And do you think like and, and I, I hear a lot of people talk about it. Lions already had a top five offense. And then if you add a Jamo in there with the speed he has, that it could make them the best offense in the NFL. Do you think that can happen with Jamison Williams? Yeah, this is something I've been preaching since we drafted this young man is you need to be patient with some players. Some players simply just don't learn as fast as other players. And clearly his development was hurt due to his injury. And then obviously with the suspension hurt him a little bit. But you saw at the end of the season, Jamison Williams wasn't just a decoy type of player. He was doing he was doing catches with five yards, 10 yards. And we already know he could do the deep route. And we're seeing it right now of his progression. His body's in, in more in physical shape. He is much healthier. He's stronger. He's leaner. He's faster. And guess what, folks? Him and Jared Goff are now on the same page. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time with Jared Goff. Took a little bit of time for St. Brown and him to get on the same page. I'm sure it took him and Josh Reynolds when they were with the Rams to get on the same page. And guess what? It's finally happened with Jamison Williams. A lot of people called this man a bust. A lot of people wanted to get rid of him and, and trade him. And I just thought that was absolutely ridiculous. And being patient with some players is exactly what sometimes needed to be. And now we're seeing it in training camp that who is breaking out? In all the training camp, it's Jamison Williams. He's beating everybody. It's starting to come together. He is going to be a threat. He's going to be a legit number two. And with his, if he can take it to the, the the length that I think he can, the Lions have a legit shot to again be a team with a top three offense, burning you from the deep pass and burning you from the inside. This team is good, and Jamison Williams is a big part of that. Love that, Mike. I love to hear that. And Mike, with DJ Reader, it sounds like he's healthy. I know he's dealing with the quad injury, and I know he's healthy, but they didn't want him going at camp. Do you think early on then, and then also early on to go with this, with the camp and what you've seen so far, it seems like it's going to be Roderick or Levi behind him. One, do you think DJ's probably going to be good to go week one? And two, if he's not, do you think it's pretty much Broderick Martin's job to lose at that point behind DJ? DJ Reader is not injured anymore. It's 100% healed. They're slowly working him in. Remember, he's a big guy. He's not like he's our size. We're talking a lot of weight on this big man. So they're slowly going to work him uh, into and get into football shape before week one. I have no doubt that he'll play week one. Absolutely. When it comes to the backup role and rotation, now this is fun because Levi and Uzurike has taken a significant step forward. I, this is a big leap for this young man. And Broderick Martin also has gotten physical shape. He took the Aline McNeil approach. These two are going to battle it out, I guess, for the first rotational piece. And it's a win-win for the team because both of these players are showing out right now. That's amazing. That's just absolutely amazing. It shows the depth in the competition. I don't know who's going to win it between those two or who will get more snaps on Sunday or Monday or Thursday. But all I know is both these players are trending in the right direction. And the Lions interior defensive line is going to be a strength of this defense. Yeah, Mike, we'll stay with the wide receiver core. Uh, take I got DPJ. I got faith in him, Mike. I do. I think the, the DPJ, you know, slander, if you will, uh, is a little extreme. Uh, I think he, again, OTA's minicamp wasn't talked about a lot. What's your take on kind of the back of that wide receiver core, your concern level, and then your confidence level in DPJ uh, potentially filling that wide receiver? It would be four role, essentially, maybe even three. We'll see. If you told me Donovan Peoples-Jones got to fill in a number two role, I would be concerned. When you're talking about the fourth wide receiver, I'm not concerned at all. I think he can fill that spot just fine. And there's been a player I've been talking about all offseason as Darius Fountain. Wide receiver, 6'2", big body, and he's been showing out in training camp. And I've been saying this guy is the sleeper to watch for the Lions' wide receiver position. I think he's going to make the team. I've been saying it for a while. And it'll be interesting to see if he actually jumps Donovan Peoples-Jones, where you could see a Fountain be a 4 and, and a DPJ be a 5. And that's great for the Lions' wide receivers. That's just outstanding. That's just great depth. I'm not too concerned about 
this position. I haven't been. I'm glad I banked on Fountain, and he's starting to pay off. Now, look, this is just training camp. We don't even have pads on. But this has been a trend from OTAs in minicamp to now. Once the pads come on and once game day occurs, I want to see how he performs. And if he's catching footballs and making plays, I don't think we need to be concerned about the wide receiver position at that point. Because you're talking about him being a four, Donovan Peoples-Jones being a five. And what, if they want to go six, you got Antoine Green. That's pretty good. And I'm confident in Khalif and J-Mo and obviously St. Brown. So I'm not too concerned about it at this moment. Um, Mike, I, I want to throw this out there too real quick because I think the biggest concern, at least on my end, if we do look at this football team, one of the biggest question marks that I keep throwing out there is the other edge room. And I know we talked about Levi O and, and Broderick and those guys, but the, the, the edge across from Aiden Hutchinson, there were reports today that Levi O was um, taking – um, snaps and with the first team on that edge spot, but also you heard Dan talk about James Houston um, and, and kind of had that conversation as well today with the Sam uh, linebacker spot. What are, what are your thoughts on, on James Houston kind of going back into that Sam spot after we saw it for two games last year? I wouldn't say it was the best thing ever. We didn't really get to see James um, Houston kind of go get a sack and do what he did the year before. Are you in on that or do you, are, are you, or what are you, where are you at in your thoughts kind of with James um, in that position going forward? I always do trust the coaching staff. They definitely know what's best for their players. They seem to make players switch positions like if Futu Malfanwu and it comes out great, right? We've seen it with other players. Malcolm Rodriguez playing offense. So if the coaches believe that this is something they can utilize and maybe it's a strength, I don't have a problem with it because I do fully trust our coaches. Concern about that edge position. I am a little concerned. We haven't heard a whole lot besides Aiden Hutchinson's dominant in the interior defensive lines. You know, they're switching up with Broderick and Levi. Where about that other edge position? We haven't heard a whole lot. Monday, we got the pads on, and I, I think we all should have a microscope at that edge position. That's the one concern, at least from a roster standpoint, who's going to stand out. Marcus Davenport, yet to be seen. You know, is it Joshua Pascal? John Kaminsky's third string reps right now, so... That is that is the biggest question mark, I think, for this roster right now is edge opposite of Hutch. Yeah, and, and Mike, a thing that is definitely without a question, one of the strengths of this team is the running back room. Is Sione Vaca and Craig Reynolds, they're battling for three and, the three and four spot right now. Do you think it's more likely that they keep both of them, or do you think it's more likely one guy gets the job and the other guy's on the move? Obviously, it would be Craig that would be on the move, but do you think that Sione kind of kicks him out of town? I think it's going to be one, two, three, four. Craig Reynolds and uh, Sione Vaki will be on the team. Uh, they they both have different little attributes. When it comes to Craig Reynolds, as you know, he's an, he's a really good running back. He's not great at anything, but he's good at pretty much everything. And Dan Campbell talks about consistency. He really loves players who are consistent. Craig Reynolds is the epitome of consistency, right? You know exactly what you have with him. What I like about Vaki, though, is he has the special teams, soft hands, theoretic type of player. So I think they can have all four. All four have a role on this team. Vaki is going to be a special player. I think he's going to be a theoretic type of guy, not necessarily running every single down, but it's third down and five, and you need to get a running back to get a first down, throw it to Siona Vaki. He's got great legs. His hips is great. You see how he ran through the, the, the drills today? Amazing. And he's going to be a piece of this team. So all four of those running backs, that's who I got making the roster. Love it. Great stuff, Mike. We appreciate you. You guys can check Mike out at Lions today. Lions Talk by Chad Sports. Mike, we'll talk to you very soon, my friend. We appreciate you for joining us today. Real, real, real quick, Mike, are you are you going to be at training camp? Are you, are you heading out? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be at training camp. I got a lot going on. As you can see, I'm not even at my own house. I've been doing a lot of yard work as we're trying to get this house sold. So it's been extremely, oh, no. extremely busy. Um, and so that's what's been going on there. But everybody, I want you to smash the like button for these guys. They're working really, really hard. Support them. If you can, you want to send super chats, these guys are putting in the work. The amount of detail that you have to go in before you do a live stream, when you're doing research on the players, is massive. Please support these guys. They're awesome. Appreciate you know what, that, Mike? Mike? That's oh, why. Mike, you man. know what? We appreciate you. Thank you for your all the love Imagine. and the support. Mike, you, hey, you get that house sold, Mike. All right? Keep doing your thing. <laughs> Keep doing it there. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Appreciate you, you Mike. Micro Mike.